All right, we're back, and it's um, Java programming. Um, we're looking at uh, COM228, uh, week 10, lesson 10, part 2. Uh, part 1 was we set up some stuff for next week for um, when we're going to be doing a JDBC, right? Um, and I asked you guys in the last, um, in the last video to uh, download and install WAMP um, for, for, so we can use our JBC stuff for next week. Things I'm talking about this week, though, is two things. Next week is week 11. So just FYI, we will be having a little quiz on uh, this, this uh, uh, in this, but we won't have it this day. We'll have it like during the, during the morning, in the morning section, because everyone shows up in the morning and no one shows up at nighttime, typically. So that'd be bad. That'd be really mean. I don't want to, I don't want to be mean to anybody. So it's okay. We'll do it during the day. So people can come out. The whole class will be full for one, one half, uh, half the day. And then I won't see you guys again until like you know for a couple of weeks. It's okay. I, I understand, right? I I don't. I'm not taking it to heart. Uh, but anyway, so just a reminder for those people watching the video that next week on Tuesday, in the morning class from 10:30 to 12:30, uh, in that range, and it won't be the whole time. I'll make it only one of the hours, one of the two hours. We'll have a little quiz, multiple choice, true, false, short answer maybe. Um, you know, that kind of does you know looks at the stuff we've been talking about so far. Um, with with Java, okay, just like so that it's not as bad. So the exam, I always try and take away from the exam, so the exam isn't as killer, right? Uh, because I always, you know, uh, exams are really hard. Some people don't do so well. Okay, so what are we doing today? We're going to go do uh, start a new project. So we're going to say uh, file uh, here in about Chrome. How about we do the right the right thing instead of killing everything again? Eclipse file. I'm going to start off a new uh, Java project here, right? Now, let's just cancel that for a second. How do I start off a new Swing project? Is there a special way? Anybody? Uh, sorry, Swing. I mean, I mean JavaFX. Anybody remember how to do that? Yes. I can go to Other, you said? Or how about Project by itself? Don't do Java project, do Project, right? And then if you go down to, Java, to project, you can see that there's a Java effects project, right? That's the one you want. And you want to click next. Okay, when we pick, uh, uh, pick up a Java effects project, I want to show you this a couple times. We've already seen this one time. We want to name this project right, um, and we're going to call this, um, you know, lesson uh, 10. So comp228, how about that? Comp228, and it's lesson 10. And we're going to go next. And um, it's going to take us into the, when we go next again, it's going to take us to this area where what kind of app are we designing, an application type, desktop or mobile? So we're going to stick this desktop for now. Our package name, um, what I want to do is I want to build a, the calculator app from the book, right? So how we're going to do as much as we can, by the way. It's going to be tough to do it. So it's going to be tip calculator. And our language of choice is going to be FXML, right? FXML. The root type is important. Um, notice that the root type right now it says border pane. Let's not choose a border pane. Let's choose a um, a grid pane by by uh, kind of a default here. We may have to change this later on. These are all configurable later. Our file name will be tip calculator, and our controller is going to be our tip calculator controller. Tip calculator controller. Big names, right? And then click finish. So there's a reason for this. Uh, there's kind of a method to my madness when it comes to all this stuff. Let me just make sure that this is all named correctly. Comp two two eight because it's appearing at the top because it's it's ten less than ten. And if we notice here, it comes up with this Java FX SDK bundle, which includes the uh, uh, you know kind of the the plugin as well as under the source files. I have my tip calculator package. This is the first time we're exploring packages. Remember, packages are like namespaces. They're like folders, but if you notice the tip calculator package, you have several files here that we get by default, almost like our template, right? So one of them is the main, right? And if I double click on main, you can see that you get a bunch of stuff. First, you get something called grid pane, right? And the grid pane is a root object. If you remember correctly, the way it works out with Java FX, every object is a node, right, in Java FX. Nodes that contain other nodes are called containers, 
Okay, that's the, the one thing to note. And you can add a node uh, to another container, to a container, by using the, um, the add um, uh, method. And we'll talk about that. Now here, let me explain what's happening here. One, we have a try-catch block that we're having a generic exception uh, in here. We don't really need this try-catch. We're going to keep it here, though, just because it's best practices. Also, notice also in our main method that in our main method, we extend the application class. So the application class comes from JavaFX application application, right? That's where it comes from. That's the application namespace. And it's, uh, there's a class called application. We're actually extending it, which means our main method here is an application. All right, it's got an is a relationship. Something to note that um, I come down the line and I have, remember how Java is set off or Java effects. In Java effects, what you have is um, we have an analogy for how things work. And the analogy is you have something called scenes, right? And the stage. So the stage, which we've called primary stage, right? Notice how stage, primary stage. The stage itself is where all the action happens. So imagine if um, you have a movie, right? And um, you have, there's a stage actually at the movie theater, right? And you have the curtains and now the curtains are always pretty much open. In the old days, the curtains were closed in the movie theater. And when the movie started, the curtains were open just like it does in a play. And the, um, you know, uh, the projector will project the light onto the onto the screen, and then away you go. Nowadays, for most of the time, anyway, all the screens are always open, so the stage um, is always showing some kind of scene, and usually some kind of advertising. Especially if you go to Cineplex Odeon, there's always something going on. You can play some games beforehand, all kinds of stuff that you can do. But the stage itself is where the action is going to happen. All right. Think about our stage as the framework for our application. Okay, and inside our application, we have a scene. Now, our application can have many scenes, just like a movie has many scenes. You have your opening scene for the movie, right? Uh, think about a, a, a typical James Bond movie, right? Um, in the James Bond movie, you have a series of action sequences in the, in the beginning. That's a bunch of scenes, right? And then what ends up happening is you move into a, a, a place where there's a kind of a quiet period, a quiet time for, for James Bond, and when he gets his mission, Right, so James Bond does a lot of action in the beginning, and then he's got a mission in the sec in the second sequence, right, which is a scene, right, and then um, this the, there's a, a building, you know, a, the action builds in the movie, and finally you get to the to his conflict, he's fighting somebody or whatever. That's another group of scenes. In an application framework perspective, now that's the analogy that we're using. Applications, each scene is a screen. Okay, that's what I want you to think about that. So you have your uh, your stage, that's the actual application view, right? Your viewport, if you will. And the scene is the thing that you're swinging into the viewport so we can see it. Okay, so if my viewport is 640 by 480 and I have my scene that swings in, I can see whatever I have in that scene. For us, for our application, we're going to have, I believe, only one scene. And let's take a look at that. So that's what scene is. Scene is, is the screen that we're going to see. And right now, our screen size is 400 by 400. Okay, I can make this change whatever I want. And again, if I wanted to make my scene 640 by 480 or some other uh, number, I could do that by just changing these numbers right here. Right? Notice that I pass in something called the root. This is the root node, and it is a grid pane. Okay? There's different kinds of layouts, and we're going to talk about some of these different layouts. Um, one of them is a, um, an anchor pane, and there's another one called a border pane, and there's different ones. Grid pane, if it sounds, if you, if you hear what it sounds like, is a grid, right? So it has columns and rows, and it allows us to organize our um, our layout in that way. And again, if you notice, it says FM, FMX loader load, and then we use the get class method to get the class and get resource tip calculator to FXML. We're going to move this around eventually, but for now, uh, it takes this tip, tip calculator FXML, which is an XML file. Who's who knows XML? You guys should all know a little bit of XML. Yeah. yeah, you guys learned a little bit of it. And when you did HTML, it's a markup language. So if you know HTML, if I look at the XML, so FXML, it looks like this, right? So you have your grid pane, 
uh, def the kind of just you know kind of defining what the grid pane looks like. You have something else. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it down here so you can see it. We have something right now in there um, called take a look uh, FX controller, which points to the tip calculator controller. That's what it points to, right? So which is right here. This is our tip 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 that tip calculator controller right here. My tip calculator controller right now is empty. I don't have anything in there, right? There's nothing inside of there whatsoever. So here's my tip calculator, and here's my uh, controller, and this my here's my uh, my view. And we can also have something else called a model. So this goes right back to this whole model view controller scenario. Uh, who knows what model view controller is? Have you guys done model view controller a little bit? Yes, you have, or no? Yeah. Yes. And uh, Ravina's shaking her head. She goes, "I don't know what you're talking about, Tom." So the model view controller is a pattern, a software a design pattern, okay, where we separate our concerns. Think about if I was to program everything in one file, right? So all of my code goes in one file. I program the, the, the view, so the, the, all the, the UI. I program my, all my stuff, uh, my classes, everything in one file, right? Or maybe I'm programming in a bunch of files, but they're all Java files, and they're all mixed in. My views mixed in with my controller, my stuff that we, how, I, how we control the view. Um, you know, we, the way we connect to our database and our backend, which we'll talk about next week, it's all mixed in, right? We don't want that. We want to separate concerns. And if I was to look at the simple diagram for model view controller, and you can even, even Wikipedia has a pretty good de definition of it. So if I say model view controller, if I can type, um, it has some pretty cool pictures. Uh, if I look at just images, this is a great example of what the model view controller looks like, right? And actually, this is a typical picture that I've seen. I'm just pulling up uh, uh, Google here. So you've got your user. Um, he uses the controller, right? He manipulates the model. The model connects to the database back here. It updates the view, whatever he's, and then he sees um, the view that's being served up by the model and it's through the controller. Right, so we separate our concerns. We have a view section that takes care of all the view, right? The, all the UI elements, and then um, our design elements are in the view as well. Our controller is the kind of the mind of how the view works, and it loops back into the model. For example, our schema for database, how it connects to the database, all that kind of stuff is handled by the model itself. So we create a, let's say, for example, a, a user model if you want to log in, right? The user model might have things like username and password and how to connect the, the, the uh, methods uh, in order for us to connect to the database and even things like our CRUD methodology might be here in the model, right? Um, a lot of times it's handled by the controller, however. The model just keeps track of how everything is, is played out, what the database looks like. That's the model, right? So when we kind of make our entity relationship data and our diagrams, right, it's all housed in the model. But the controller uh, uses the model to access the database. Okay, so model view controller pattern has been around for a long time. Um, it's not something new, but and what we're trying to do here uh, with Java and its more modern form, moving away from Swing being the old UI set, right? We're moving towards this model view controller almost methodology here, right? Okay, and when we look at this thing. Um, I have in here CSS. Here's some CSS that's built in. Notice how I have application.css. It's an empty file right now. And you're going to say, hold on, CSS, what are you talking about? Yes, it's true. You can have CSS and we can add styles to the way things go, or the way things look. On top of that, when I look at my um, tip calculator uh, model or my tip calculator FXML, right now all we have in here is a reference to the, the controller. But there's many other things we can put in here. Notice there's a grid pane. So there's two ways we can add this in. We can hand bomb it in here, right, which is really cool, the stuff you can do, right? And this is where you do the view. Or, again, if I right click on my FXML, I can open up with Scene Builder. Remember, we have to download and install Scene Builder last week. We're prepared to do this this week by downloading it, just like we did WAMP server this morning to connect to our, our uh, you know, MySQL database for next week. So let's open up the scene builder. And when scene builder opens up, we see that I have a grid pane, right? Here's my grid pane. Um, you don't see the grid pane here for now, but um, notice how it's, it, there is a grid pane that I'm using here, okay? <coughs> okay, so I want to add, this is the root node. My grid pane is the root or in the hierarchy, 
right? So I want to add some stuff in there. So let's say, as an example, I want to add in a label into my into my node, right? So I search down here for my controls. I click on controls. I look at a label, right? Here's my label. And I can drag it either into the scene, which is right in here, or right into my hierarchy, which is called the scene graph. That's what it's called, okay? And notice how I have a label, right? Here's my label. Notice also how I have these constraints here, right, that, I, that I've come up, right? So I've got this label right here. And I want to put in another uh, a text box of some sort, right? So let's say my label, which, by the way, the properties inspector is on the right-hand side. I can rename the text for my label. Let's say, for example, um, it's, I'm creating a, uh, um, a first name, last name idea. I can say first name is my first name. And um, right now the font is system 13. We don't want to mess with the fonts here. We want to do that all in my, in my CSS, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, here's my text fill, black. This is all cool. We're not touching the, the stuff, though, for a second. Here's my graphic. Uh, it says my graphic text. Let me pull this out and see what it says. Text gap 4. These are all things that we should probably set up in my, um, uh, with my CSS, right? My alignment is center left, right? And um, I have some other options here in terms of, of the way things go, right? But I really can't see the size of my screen right now. Notice how my grid pane, even though it's, uh, you know, um, if, if I go into my layout on the bottom here, and if I see, if I scroll down, I can see um, different <clears throat> details. Here's my code for my grid pane. I can see different details of stuff like um, how I can code up my um, uh, my actions and my events, right? So I'm looking at my grid pane, my model, which is one by one right now. Okay, let's add. Notice how also my label is at position zero zero. What does that mean? Zero zero. Yep. But let's let's put in this over here. In in you notice on the right hand side under layout. Right for my grid, my grid pane constraints is over here, right? Under properties for my label, right? I have my line spacing and my graphic text gap and all this other stuff, my um, other things. But here, where, where, where I want to look at, by the way, under layout for my label, my row index is zero and my column index is zero, right? Which means if I'm looking at it as a grid, my top left corner of my column my rows and columns my grid is where my label is. Let's add a, um, an, uh, a text box. So I'm going to go down to uh, text view. I'm going to drag the text view underneath the label, but still within the grid pane. And notice how it layers on top, right? Because my text, my, oh, my table view. Let's just undo that. <laughs> I meant a text view, not a text, uh, uh, not a table view, text field. So there's my text field, and it also has zero zero. Well, that's not that doesn't make any sense, right? So where I want to put this is the same row, so index is zero, but my column index will be one. So let's move this to one and see what that does to our text field, right? So change my column index. <clears throat> I want to change my column index to one. Now, nicely, um, how it doesn't pertain to that. How do I? In here, in my in my graphic uh, representation, here's my graphic representation. I want to pull this so that one thing is next to the other, like this. See? So I pulled it next to it, next to each other. So this is um, the zeroth, the first column. Here's the first column, and the first column, but the same row. Okay. Also, if I want my my uh, my first name to be very long, I want a row span. Instead of my row span being one, one row, right? Or my column span being one, one column. If I have a very long last name, maybe I need two columns for my name, right? So I can do that. I can change my column span, right? I can change it to two. Let's see how that works. So I press enter. And of course, it doesn't affect, it's not affected here. But let's see if I can expand this thing. Um, that's my constraint, sorry. And that's my width. No, I want to make my my uh, my row span too. Well, before I do that, let's let's see what I got in code. So I'm going to save this thing. 
Okay, so I've saved it. It says changes saved to tip calculator to FXML. Let's go back to tip cal calculator to FXML to see what it looks like. So I'm going to you know, kind of go back here. And I have to kind of refresh my screen, right? There it is. So I've added a bunch of stuff here. Column constraints, I've got them in here. If you notice, there, there's no column constraints because they've been removed. So I'm going to take this whole section out. This is just useless. I've got row constraints. Let's try that again. Column constraints out, row constraints. Notice that there's no row constraints here. So I can get those out of there too, my row constraints. Because it's going to add in, whenever you have a GUI, uh, a UI, right, it adds information that you don't always need. You can always kind of go here and, and, uh, and use the same thing here. Okay, so here's my children. I have my something called a label, right? And notice how it says grid pane column one, right? I'm going to kind of go in here for my text field. And here's my label, right? And if I say, if I want to be really specify the, the grid pane, I could say th something like this, grid pane, let's type this out here, dot um, <clears throat> column zero, column index, right, is equal to zero, right? Because that's the first uh, column index, right? And this one, my row index is one, right? So sometimes if I have more than one option, I want to do something like this. My grid pane dot row uh, index is also equal to zero. This is zero zero, right? For my first one, and this is all in the XML or uh, FXML. And again, grid pane dot uh, row index is also equal to uh, zero because the row is the same, right? Here's the row. When I launch this thing, if I go back to main and if I click on play to launch it, if everything goes well, I have this situation where I have my first name and my and my uh, uh, my object right here. <clears throat> okay, I want to change my font for my first name, and I want to change my font in general for my entire file, and I want to make it like Helvetica. Um, that's the font size. And I want to make it for Helvetica like twenty pixels. Okay. So typically, there's two ways to do this. You can do this in line, which is always bad, like this. This is the bad way to do it. So I go in FXML, and if I go where it says um, here in my, um, where it says FX controller, so inside my grid pane, I'm going to make some space, right? And I'm going to say one of these. I'm going to do uh, style, which is like an inline style, right? And I could do something like this dash fx, this is the way we do style sheets uh, with uh, um, the style, so uh, this is inline styling, and this is for the root, dash fx dash, and let's say we want font family, just like we normally would, so font family, and we would put in something like um, Helvetica, and if we want to continue writing styles, we could do this, semicolon, inside the brackets, or inside the quotations, uh, dash fx dash, and then font dash size, right, where we have the font size is 20 pixels, okay, and I can save that. And if I go back to check it out, so if I run this thing, go back to main, run this thing, now you'll see it's Helvetica with 20, right, so I've added an inline style, and this is great if all we had was one scene, right, but just like CSS is fantastic when it comes to managing websites, take a look, how my, my font is pretty big here, right, just like my, my website's good if, uh, if we're good at managing websites this way, we want to manage it so that we, we use our, our main uh, application.css as the main website or the main uh, place where we get our style sheet. Notice how here, in this particular case, we're saying scene.getStyleSheets.add.getClass.getResources, just like we did up here. And we're using application.css, which is a um, to external form. This is one way to do it. There's another way to do it where we actually put it inside of our FXML when we reference it. So we say style sheet is equal to, and then we have a path to it, as opposed to um, doing it here within our main. Okay, so we'll talk, we'll explore that in a bit. But here in our application CSS, we can do the same thing. Um, and, and there's a couple things to do. If you want it to affect everything, okay, so all, um, everything that's inside of your, um, of your, uh, um, your design, right? Let's go back to my FXML for a second. I want to get rid of this style. I'm going to copy what I just did here, right? Uh, kind of cut it out of here. 
get rid of the style tag or the style property altogether. Let's put this little angle bracket back over here. Save it. Go back to my application.css. Let's just um, kind of delete that and press paste. And now it doesn't do anything like this, right? Because that doesn't make any sense. We don't write CSS like that. We write like this. The root node is a root class, and we put it like this, root. And inside the root, we're going to take this stuff here, this nice little CSS we just wrote. And every time you write a CSS rule um, for, um, for FXML and for um, um, JavaFX, you always write a dash FX dash in front of it, like this. So that handles all the root. This is like the body of my document. If you look at, if you compare it to HTML, the body would be the root, and this affecting everything, right? So if you want something to affect everything, like for example, line height. If I say fx dash um, line dash height, right? And we want to make it. Oh, by the way, there's m's. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. It says no line, no rule for fx dash line height found. This is good too because sometimes. We might think of things that work nicely in uh, HTML, but um, you know it doesn't work. So look, if I put this in there, if I say if I say something like this, let's say line height is 1.2 m's, right? And it's going to give me this error, right? It says unknown property fx line height. Again, let's go back to our our um, Java FX. This is the best way to do it. Java FX. Uh, CSS, um, CSS rules, or reference, and this is good. This is our CSS reference guy for Java. Now this is funny. Um, something I read before in a little bit of tutorial. <laughs> it's really badly styled for uh, a CSS thing. That's interesting. But we'll we'll avoid. We'll just ignore this whole thing. So if we want to look and see, these are all the different kinds of controls and how to style them. This is really cool. And down here we have charts and references about how to do it. So let's say, for example, I want to, I want to, um, uh, from a node perspective, right? When I look down here, you can see how I have the group and my node, my parent, my scene, you know, as an example. And I want to start styling different uh, nodes. I also want to know what I inherit and what I don't. Some objects inherit from others. So as I go down and I look at my scene, here's my group, my node, my my parent, my scene. Anchor pane. Oh, look, there's my grid pane. So I click on grid pane. Notice how it has things like I can affect that are special for my grid pane. Like, for example, um, FX dash H gap. H gap is the horizontal gap between, um, between cells. Okay, so if I want to add 10 pixels of horizontal gap, um, I could do that. I could say, uh, but it wouldn't be 10 pixels, it would be 10. All right, so let's just go back. So this is no good. Let's just take this out. My line height is no good, but I could put something like this. I could put for my root, everything inside my, my option, I can say fx dash and then h gap. Notice how it gives me some code hinting there, right? And my h gap is 10. And you know what? fx dash um, and I control space v gap, right? My v gap is also 10. So my vertical gap between, um, uh, between cells is also 10. And if I apply that and if I run it, press place, press play here. Notice how I've got a bit of a gap now between this and if I added other cells in here, I'd have a vertical gap too. But not, that's the vertical, that's the horizontal gap, it's 10, right? Let's keep adding more stuff and let's just try it out by my fx dash da, um, space. And control space will give me this uh, kind of pickup and I can look at some other stuff here that I want to use. And I want to kind of see if there's any kind of... Um, so there's font, which is the, um, instead of font family, font scale, font style, font weight. So if I want my font weight to be bold for certain items, I can do that. Image, label, legend. And so most of the stuff that you'd find in CSS, you might be able to find here. There's going to be some like line height. It doesn't compute when it comes to this kind of stuff. Text fill, text origin, text overrun. You know, and a bunch of other stuff. You can see that there's all kinds of stuff you can use here. FX underline. So that's what it, we can do with that one. Okay, I want to style all my labels. All my labels um, are going to be bold. All my labels, right? How do I do that? You use FX dash and then label 
and for camel case, uh, you know, characters that are big, let's go back to uh, um, here for some, for example, let's take a look at some controls. Table column, right? If you're going to style all table columns, it would be dash fx dash, lowercase table dash column. So camel casing is dash casing. And when it comes to uh, uh, CSS, okay? If you want to affect text areas or text fields, as an example, you could do that. All right, so let's say, for example, my text field um, right now, I want it to have a blue color, right? But I want all text fields to have a blue color, and I want all labels, because I added a label in there, right? Here's my label. Here's my label right here. I want all labels to have um, bold. So font, uh, font weight bold. Let's try that out. So go back to here, and now I'm going to uh, select another class. The class is going to be label, right? And for my label class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fx dash font control space font weight. Here it is, font weight. And if I can type in bold, right, that'll give me um, all my labels. It says all my labels have a font weight of bold. Very CSS-like, right? It's almost identical, in fact. And if I was to run this thing to see my, my bold label now, notice how my, my label is bold, right? Nice and easy. And I want to make my typing here, whatever I type in here, in here, I want to make it so that this uh, typing, I'm going to make it so that it is blue, like a blue typing. So I'll do the same thing. So I'll say all text fields will have blue typing. Okay, and let's just make sure we close off some of these other, I've, I've left a bunch of these, these items open, silly me. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my CSS, and this is where we get like some real powerful stuff going on. And I like this. I'll be honest with you. I like this way more from a styling perspective than um, than Swing because Swing was like very specific. There's lots of code, and this is truly a separation, right? So let's say uh, text dash field. That's how we do it. <clears throat> so all text fields. That's what this is saying. All text fields are going to have um, FX dash color of, and now look, now it says no FX color, remember? So this is where we have to find, you know, uh, text. Uh, and again, if you notice text.fill, what that is, it says the paint used to fill the text, right? So it's not necessarily color like you would normally be. So if I say text fill and I want to say blue, right? So let's use a regular color that we know, right? Let's test it out and see what we get if I'm getting it the right thing. So I start typing and I get blue, right? And that's for all text fields. Okay, now what about if I want to specify a specific text field? How do I do that? So I'm going to go back to my FXML for that. And notice that my label has my text is first name, but I don't have any kind of way of identifying it. Like an example of that would be if I said something like this. If I said fx uh, colon and then id, right? Here's my id, right? Equals to, and then I put in an id for it, which is my uh, name label. Here's my name label. That's my id, right, for this. And I got some pretty good code hinting there when I was doing that, right? Let's do the same thing for my text fields. So I'm going to go, and go to the next one. Uh, and remember, XML. As long as you put spaces between your properties, you can group them up like this. So it looks just like this. Lots of control. So I'm going to say, again, um, let's put this right on the same uh, level here. So fx colon id, right, equals to, and we'll, we'll call this name text field. Right, so here's my name text field. And we got my, my name label. Now I want to do two things with these things. Not only do I have these things uh, as IDs, how do I target things uh, for ID, uh, like IDs for specifically for uh, uh, with CSS? What do I do? The what? The hashtag. So the hashtag is the same thing. We put go back, and if I want to specify my name label, right? So now let's say this is specificity. Now specifically my name label that's being affected. So I say hashtag name label, right? For specifically for that. I want to apply a different style to it. I want to also make it so that it's um, dash fx dash font, and I got to kind of uh, font style, right? Font style italic. 
right? Let's try that out. Font style italic. So only specifically for the name label, the font style italic. And let's see how that works out when I do this. And I press it. So now it's bold and italic, but only for this name label. If I made another label, it wouldn't be, right? So that's how you specify, um, you know, the stuff that we're looking at here. Okay, so we've got a couple of things um, that we're able to do here, right? And I want to add a button, right? But I don't want to add it in by dragging and dropping it, okay? So let's just, first of all, let's do a couple of things. First of all, let's close this off and we'll close off the next one. And you know what? We'll even close off our scene builder because our scene builder hasn't, re hasn't reflected any of the changes anyway, right? So I'm just going to kill this thing. Don't save. We're going to get back to it in a second. You're going to see how I can use scene builder to more of effect, all right? Here's one that I want to do. I want to go in here and I want to add my own button, right? So I can drag and drop a button, but I know there is a button, so I can start adding that in. I'm going to say um, button. Look how it gives me the, uh, the defaults, right? And what I want to do with a button is I want to kind of put it in. Now, there's two ways of writing the XML. One is with... Uh, beginning and closing tags, but I can also make this style happen, and this style is perfectly valid for button, okay? Where I don't have a closing tag, it self-closes, okay? So I want buttons, and you know, I can have the same thing. So my text for my button, you know, is gonna be something like, click me, all right, let's try this out, so click me. Click me, right, we did this before. And um, you know what, I wanna also set up my grid pane the place, the positioning for my button, which is inside my layout. So I can do that here. I can say grid pane dot, um, we'll say row index first. Row index um, is equal to uh, one, right? And grid pane uh, column index, okay? So the column index is going to be uh, one as well, right? Right? But I want it to align this thing, you know, to the right. Okay, so I want to do that. So how I do that? First of all, let's see what I get with my button. And oh yeah, you know what? Just because we have a button, we'll do an FX uh, ID equals to our click me button. Right, click me, click me button. Right. Okay, cool, cool. And let's see what we get when we go back to main. Right. So run that off. Yay! There's a click me button. How beautiful it is, huh? That's what I'm saying. That's why I like JavaFX. JavaFX is like nice and easy, nothing too crazy. Um, again, there's some still some issues in terms of margin and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that. Um, and here's our click me button. It doesn't do anything right now when I click it, right? And I want to add an event, but I want to move this to the right. Now, there's two ways to do this. My, my, um, my column span is one, all right? Let's do, so let's do it. Now let's use our, our, uh, our nifty little tool to help us. So I'm gonna kind of right click on FXML and I'm gonna open with Scene Builder and see what we get. Well, I get this, right? So I actually get a representation. And sometimes I wanna use Scene Builder to get a quick view, a preview of what it's gonna look like, right, before I actually do my code, right? This works well for me. Notice how some of these fields are different now, right? And notice also how um, here is zero, zero, one, one, and then zero, one for my, uh, for my, my grid. It shows me my grid view here, which is kind of cool, right? Depending on what I click. So really, really kind of an intuitive way of looking at things now with, um, you know, my grid pane being the first one. I got a two by two grid. That's what it is uh, so far. And it expands. My grid pane will expand according to what I add in. Okay, so I want to make this, this click me, I want to make my click me button. I want to have a different, uh, first of all, column span, all these different things here, by the way, all of these, even H alignment, huh? Ah, H alignment, right? I want to make it to the right, right? So that's what I want. I want my H alignment to go to the right, so my click me button is here. So I could use my tool to do it for me, right, by saving it, and it saves back to my tool. Let's see how it messes up my code. I always mess up my code, by the way. And I go back uh, to CSS, back to my FXML. And um, if I go back to my FXML, notice that it added a bunch of other stuff here, right? Row constraints and blah, blah, I don't need any of this stuff. But it also did two things. It reorganized my code, 
right? So it did grid pane and all that stuff, right? Specifically. And it also added in this grid pane.h alignment right. Put it right there. Grid pane.h alignment right. So let's just reorganize it the way I had it. So I like I like looking at it that way. So I want to kind of uh, sparse it out. So one, I want to have the text value here. And again, all that's what I'm saying. If you don't know how to do it, worst case scenario, you can always add it in. Right. So there it is. And we want to put this one in there and this one over here. So it, it exposes the code for us. We can build our UI in a kind of a semi-intuitive manner. And once we have our UI, we want to be able to create our controller or use our controller to create the rest. Okay, cool. So this this is our our, our, our buttons and labels. By the way, I can use the same kind of, of um, um, comments style, right, as I do in, in HTML. So I would do one of these, right, where I have a comment style and I can say something like, um, my name label, right, to split it off. And I can add spacing it in here as well, where I say, um, this is my text field, uh, name text field. And again, um, and I can add in more, but just to, just to give me an idea of what everything is. So this would be the uh, click me button, click me button. Again, for some, some um, you could document it the way you like, right? And maybe add some spacing in here, so to really separate my uh, my view, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Questions so far? So we have two pieces that we've looked at right now. Actually, there's three. The X FXML is actually telling what my are uh, telling us what my view is going to look like it designs the objects I can actually I can physically type them here or I can use my my scene builder to do it for me right and it'll draw or create my uh, um, XML for me by the way this is the exact same way we do Android programming for Android programming we have an XML uh, document a manifest of what my UI looks like exactly like this so if you notice where X where Android went it came from this okay one thing that Android doesn't have, which I wish it had, which is the CSS piece. That would be awesome. Then it would make it even easier and nicer, right? Uh, it uses another system, um, but I like the, the CSS piece that we have here. And you know what? This is a great idea. If, if Apple uh, and their UI was to use HTML or XML and CSS in their design pattern, right? It would be a lot easier and it'd be barriers to entry to design Apple or uh, apps for iOS and Android. Uh, and both iOS and Android would be gone, right? Not just for Android. Okay, so this is the first piece. What about adding in some kind of, I want my, my button, when I click my button, I want to do something with it, right? I want to have some kind of effect. How do I do that? So let's go back to my scene builder for a second, and um, we'll close this off. Don't save. I'm going to right click on my FXML, and I'm going to open with scene builder. Notice how I have the same scene. It just come in, it came into scene builder. Now I want to click on my button for a second. And one thing I want to do is I want to look at here under code. Notice how there's a bunch of different things. An example of this is on drag detected, on action. Hmm. On action. This is interesting how we will do this. If I actually click on this thing, it shows me, um, you know, a Java FX uh, kind of thing on, on what we do on action. It gives me some an example of how we do it. So here's an event handler, an action event, and get on action. Here's a, an example of what it would look like for get on action. Here's set on action, um, on action property. So set on action, it sets the value of the property on action. I can do that, set on action, whatever my event handler is, the value. Um, you know, but these, these are the event handlers that we're going to be using. Here's the on action, right? So the button's action, which is invoked whenever the button is fired, triggered, right? This may be due to the user clicking on the button with the mouse or by a touch event or by a key press or if the, the uh, developer programmatically invokes the fire method. Okay, cool. So this is what it would look like. Object property, whatever the object property is. Event handler action event is what we need to do in there. And then this on action is what we're going to fire. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep this in mind. So let's let's talk about this for a second. If I was to go back to my, um, how do I link my button to an action? Okay, my action is all going to be handled in the controller. That's where it's going to be handled in that Java file, right? So let's go back here. Let's take a look at that. So 
on action is what I want to do, right? So I want to come in here under my click me button before my text, my click me text, I can put something like this. I can say on and I can pay control space and notice how it says on action and notice how it gives me this pound key, the pound sign. I'm going to declare my action event name right now. So the event handler that I'm going to declare right now. So let's do that. Let's like uh, call this thing um, click me button uh, handler or something like that. So we'll say click me button handler, right? And it says there's an error. Now the reason why there's an error is because it says, like, rightly so, the controller, tip calculator controller has no event slot, click me button handler, for my event, right? So I need to create this event. There is no quick fix for this. If you notice, if I kind of hover over this and I say, well, fix me, you know, like I normally would see in, in a regular thing, there is no way of control spacing you know, to fix this up. I can't hover over it and control space. Um, it tells me what the button is or a label or text field, right? I can add in a comment or um, other things, but it won't tell me anything about this. So I'm adding in this click me button handler. Okay, and where would I add that in, right? I'm gonna go back to my tip calculator here for a second, right? And inside my tip calculator class, this is the class, I'm gonna add in this method, right? So how do we do that? So first, is it's going to return anything? Uh, the answer is no. So void. And let's start typing this in. Is it going to be public or private? Okay. Public, right? So public, and it's it's uh, void. And the name of the of what we just said. So we we called it the click me uh, button handler, right? And uh, I'm going to open up this thing. And now there's got to be a type action event, and it's going to be an event that I'm going to get back, right? So some kind of event. So I'm going to say action event with an event coming back, right? This is the kind of way we'll do that. And then we're going to kind of do one of these. And now we've got a couple errors. One of it, we don't know what this action event is. And if you notice, it says, make, be careful here, where it says import action event. There's two, one, there's two of them. There's one that's action event from AWT. We don't want that one. We want the one from JavaFX. And then it kind of, you know, it kind of uh, puts together this action event. So when the click me button is, is clicked, we're going to do this click me button handler. I'm going to just go back to my FXML and make sure that that error goes away. See how the error went away? Error gone, right? Why? Because it knows that in my tip calculator controller, we have this click me button event. Okay, let's do something. Let's first of all do a system.out.println, right? And we'll print out something to uh, to the console that says something like "You click me." Right there, we go. You click me. There we go. Okay, so let's run this thing now. I'm gonna save and run. And if everything goes well, when I click the button, then I get "You click me." Nice and easy. That's how easy it is. Like truly, it's like stupid easy to make UIs in Java effects. Now you've got everything. You can do everything now, guys. Come on. Like after this, if you don't know how to do stuff because we've done it in Swing. Um, you've got 90% of what you need um, for any assignment that I give you related, related to Java effects. Okay? And I'll give you your assignment next week, your next assignment, which is going to be on Java effects and UI and all that stuff. Um, it's going to be due you know, later on, but um, I won't give it to you now because I want to talk more about this. And we'll also have JDBC in, involved. So imagine we can use a, um, a, a UI to get information back from a database, which is what we're going to be doing right from now on in. And we're using Java effects from, from, from now on. Like we're not going to do any kind of more um, stuff on the console. But so how do I add this stuff in? This is neat and all. Thanks, Tom, for showing us this. Yes, it's nice. But how do I how do I affect another object? Well, I have an ID for the object, but I need to make a class for the object, all right, or a, a property. And um, well, let's take a look here for a second. Let me take a look what we got in our uh, tip calculator to FXML. We have a property that we've named. Um, wait, like, for example, if I want to click my button and I want something else to, to pop up, first of all, um, let's realign some of this stuff. Let me add, um, let's change the, the row index for my first name and my name text field. Let's see how fast we're going to do this. We're, we're going to make this row one. Bear with me while we do this. Here's row one. And this is going to be uh, row index two, right? What happens if we just do this? We don't have a row zero, right? Does it actually print out the way we think it's going to print out? So all we've done is change from row zero to row one. 
in our in our grid, right? Right. So a little bit of space on the top is what it does, but it's flattened out, right? Notice how we're on column uh, column one. We're right at the we're at the edge here, right? Um, and notice how it says um, someone else's whatever. That's some that's some minor error that I'm gonna, I'm going to ignore right now. Um, but let's say, for example, the same thing goes with uh, column index. We'll say column index. We'll start at column index one, right? And uh, this will be column index two, right? And this will be column also column index two, right? So now let's see what we get. So just increase it a little bit. So there we go. We got a bit of more spacing with some, um, you know, kind of uh, spacing around using uh, this grid layout, right? So a little bit of spacing on the top. But I want to add something, um, you know, to this kind of stuff. It's a little bit annoying. We're kind of shifting things around. This is where the drag and drop stuff comes into play a lot easier because you can move things around a little bit more. So let's add um, another object where we have kind of our message label, our message text uh, that we're, that's going to be up here. So we're going to add in something called uh, text. So we're going to have not a text field, but text. Right, so text um, is also going to have um, this closing tag, and the text area that we're going to create is we're just going to have an ID that's equal to um, kind of our our message message text. Okay, so we're going to say message text. That's our ID, right? And inside this message text, we want to style this a little bit different than everything else, so we can target it. Um, first of all, we need to put in our grid pane. So grid pane column uh, index, right, is is going to be one. So I want it to have in the same in the kind of the same column as the others. And the next one is our uh, GERD pane, our GERD pane, um, my grid pane. And then let's do the next one. So our grid pane dot row index, right, that's also going to be equal to uh, zero, right. So the zeroth row, the first row, way back um, on the top, right. And now what I want is I want to style this thing. So I'm going to go back into my application.css here. And I want to target uh, my uh, message text. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say number um, message text. Right, for my styling, I want to put in the uh, fx-font-size. Right? We're going to make this something like, I don't know, 60 pixels. All right, so much bigger font for our message text, right? And we also want to have some default text in there, otherwise it's going to be popping up, right? So let's make it so we go back to our um, our FXML, and notice that there even our message text has no text property right now. So we're going to say text is equal to um, <coughs> enter a message, right? Okay. So um, let's see how this looks when I run this thing. So I'm going to run this by going to, uh, to kind of here and run this up for a second. Enter a message. It's really massive. Enter a message. And there's my first name, but I don't have any kind of message box. What happened? Right? I was overzealous is what I did, right? I kind of pushed this over here, and I made this enter a message only span one column, right? So it's pushed this column way over here, right? And that doesn't make any sense, right? So what I want to do is make this span, this column, this message span two columns or more, right? So how do I do that? So I'll go back to my um, here, and I'm going to say something like this. Um, underneath here, I'll say grid pane dot. And then if I look at it, if I start typing, um, I want to make a column, kind of my column um, my column span, column span, right, is equal to two. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see what that does. Maybe we need three. All right, so we'll kill this thing here for a second, enter a message, and we'll save everything, and we'll rerun it here in main, and press play. Right. And we got pretty, it's closer, right, um, but I think I need one more. I think I need another column. So instead of, uh, because it's so large, Enter a message is massive, right? So let's uh, change this from two to three. 
So I'm making it three columns. It's basically like if you go to Excel and you just expand, you, you know, you expand the column so that it takes up three columns instead of one column. That's what it's going to do. It's going to span across three columns. It's this one object, right? Okay. And go back to here and press play. And now it looks like this. And we have a bit of a problem, right? How come it's, you know, this thing is the way it is? Well, we're actually right. But the problem is we've limited our box with our code to 400 by 400, right? So again, it's width and height. So if I want to make it span, let's try 500 by 400. See if this makes any sense to us as we're building our little app. There's 500 by 400. That's not bad, right? So it's a little better. So when I type my name, my first name, that's going to appear up here, right? Whatever I type. How do I do that? Well, first of all, I need a couple of things. I need access uh, to some of these properties in my controller, right? My controller, right, if I click at, and if I start typing FX, FXML, like this, I can bring in a property, right, which I can make private, and the private property will be something related to what I'm, what I'm doing, now if I, if I make it private, what will it be called? Well, it has to match what I've typed in. So norm, norm, uh, uh, notice that it says message text. That's what it has to be, pound for pound, like this, message text. And it's got to be the same type, which is of type text. Now, right now, we don't know what type text is because we haven't imported it. So I'm going to kind of hover over that and import my JavaFX scene text and then it brings it in, right? So I need to use the decorator at FXML, right, to indicate that this is going to be the receiver. I'm going to bind my um, my UI element, my control. I'm going to bind it to this um, this private instance variable. And if you notice, if it's private, our um, best practice is to say that we have to make this an underline underscore. But the problem is if I do this with my underscore, because I haven't really kind of created that binding, it won't work. So I have to be careful how I, if I want to make that, I have to call the other one the underscore. So let's leave this alone for now. We won't use our, our best practices. Let's do it again. So at FXML, and we'll say private, and we'll make it so that the text field is, we're going to read the text field. So we'll say text field, right? Which is our name text field, name text field, right? And we'll say at, FXML, uh, private, for now we'll see how private works for us. Um, we also have our, our button. We want to have access to the button itself, uh, change the button and so on. Uh, we would do the same thing. We would say uh, button, uh, which is our click me button, right? And if you notice these underlines, I just have to correct them with quick correct. Quick correct. Make sure you choose Java FX scene dot control. Java FX scene dot control, not the other ones, because there's other options too. So be careful what you click. Okay, so I've got everything in here. Now I want to access it. Um, I have extras that I don't need, by the way. Like label is not in here. But let's say, for example, I want to modify my um, my text message, message text. But whatever I click on my text field, right? So how do I do that? So instead of system dot that print line, I would say something like this. Um, message text, right, message text dot text or set text, set text. I want to set the value of my message text, set, uh, you know, the text of my message text to what I'm getting from my text field get text. So text field, which is going to be um, name text field dot get text method. one line. Hopefully you guys can eat that one, right? All I'm doing is I'm saying get, use my message text that I'm getting right here. I'm using at FXML to, to bind my message text um, object. Notice how the underlines go away when I bind them. The underline here is there because I haven't bound my name label to anything, right? Now if I run it, it looks like this. If I choose, if I kind of type in my name and I click click me, 
then my name, my whole thing changes, right? So I'm affecting changes to my design. If I click something else, so Mike, when I click click me, then it changes to Mike, right? And if I keep clicking, it'll change something else. <coughs> Mary, right? And if I click this, it's gone. So how did I do that? Let's go back. So uh, requirement number one is I need to have my, in my FXML, I need to have my details in here, right? Here's my details, right? Um, of my view. So all my details of my view, my, my column, my row, and I can make it pretty by uh, adding in, by, by, um, by the way, um, layering different layouts, one on top of the other. For example, I can have a grid layout within a grid layout. The grid layout within a grid layout will give me micro control over where I want to put certain things, right? That's one thing you can do. So that's one way to do it. The other one is, um, how about if I want to add in things like my, my controls? Well, each of my controls here, like I have, I have a name label. <clears throat> this actually doesn't go here, um, just from a, to make you keep it right, it goes down here, is my name label. I have another label here that I added in that uh, it wasn't really a label, it's like a message, like a text, right? So here's my, you know, message text. That's where that's where that's where that control is, right? So I got my message text, my name of these are all my controls that are inside my grid pane, right? That's all I'm doing here. Okay. So a bunch of controls. That's so my FXML talks about what my controls are. My uh, application.css, which is what I've called it, you can call this whatever you like, main.css, app.css, whatever. It controls my styling, right? And I can have, I have several things I can use that are things for my root that globally styles everything. I can target uh, all controls of a certain type, or I can target, um, you know, an object, or if I want to target more than one, right? <clears throat> I, can, I can add something called style class. So let's say, for example, I want my, um, this text field here, I want it to have a style class. So I can do that. I can say um, style class, right? And I can name my style class uh, whatever I want this message text to have. So for example, message, right? So if my style class is message, now I have to find a new style class that I can use, a CSS class in CSS. And I can go back to application.css and I can put in something like this. Message, this is my new class I made, right? So I've called it style class, and I can put in whatever I want. For example, my fx.font family, I want my font family for this particular uh, object uh, to be consolas, which is really ugly, right? But let's just say, and if I do that, and if I go back to main.java and run it, then my font style is consolas, and it's still not, it's not quite big enough. Let's add a few more pixels to it. So I'm gonna go back into my main, and instead of five, four, 500, I'll go 550 for the size of my screen as I style things out and press play. And now it's a little better. Here's my enter a message. And um, you can see how it's consolas. This is Helvetica. It's bold and in, in italic. And I've got blue text here. And I've been trying to style some of these elements in here. So again, first element is here's, my, here's where all my controls live. Second one is, here's how I style my controls and, my, and, the, and the actual UI, right? Third part is, here's how I control my events for each of my controls and how I bind my controls that are in my UI to my controller, okay? Now that you know these things, see you later, right? <laughs> you, guys know, you guys have everything you need, right? Honestly, you, uh, once you have this, you can, you can uh, extrapolate or you know, try and figure out what the next thing would be, how I would make other things work. Right, by looking at some of the documentation. Okay, let, let's pause it right here and then we'll go around and make sure everyone's got it, okay? I'm going to look at that with the screen. Mm -hmm.